Queen Letizia of Spain presides over the presentation of decorations in Oviedo. Princess Alexandra of Luxembourg gives birth to her first child in Paris. Emperor Norhito of Japan participates in the annual planting of rice at the Imperial Palace in Tokyo. And King Frederick X and Queen Mary of Denmark begin their state visit to the Kingdom of Norway. All this and much more coming up next on your Royal Daily News. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you all are doing well today. If you're new to my channel, my name is Alexandra, and welcome to your Royal Daily News for Tuesday, May 14th, 2024. In Oslo, their majesties, King Frederick X and Queen Mary of Denmark, began their two-day state visit to the Kingdom of Norway at the invitation of their majesties, King Harald V and Queen Sonia of Norway. According to the Royal Court of Norway, the historical ties between Denmark and Norway date back to 1380, when the two countries were, quote, merged under a single monarch, King Christian III. But Norway was given a subordinate role in the Union and came increasingly under Danish control. The Union with Denmark was dissolved in 1814 in the aftermath of the Napoleonic Wars. For a brief time, Norway once again became an independent nation, drawing up its own constitution. Just a few months later, however, Norway was compelled to enter into a union with Sweden, this time as an independent nation, but with a common king and joint foreign policy. In 1905, the union of Norway and Sweden was dissolved, and Norway chose its own monarch, King Haakon VII. End quote. King Haakon VII of Norway was born Prince Christian Frederick Karl Georg Valdemar Axel on August 3, 1872, at Charlotten Lund Slot in Denmark. His parents were King Frederick VIII and Queen Louise of Denmark. On June 22, 1896, the prince married Her Royal Highness Princess Maud of the United Kingdom at Buckingham Palace in London. On November 25, 1905, the prince, who took on the name King Haakon VII and Princess Maud, now Queen Maud of Norway, along with their son, Prince Alexander, who was given the name Olaf, arrived in Kristiania, also known as Oslo today, in Norway. So back to the state visit. Well, the state visit began with King Frederick X and Queen Mary of Denmark sailing through the Oslo Fjord as 21 cannon shots were fired from Akershus Fortress. Upon their arrival at the quay, their majesties were warmly welcomed by their royal highnesses, Crown Prince Haakon and Crown Princess Mathemari of Norway. Moments later, King Harald V and Queen Sonia of Norway warmly welcomed the new King and Queen of Denmark to Oslo. After the traditional welcoming ceremony, which included the playing of the national anthems and the inspection of the Guards of Honor, their majesties and the Crown Prince couple of Norway traveled by car to the Royal Palace. Once inside the Royal Palace, their majesties, the Crown Prince couple of Norway, and Her Highness, Princess Astrid Mrs. Ferner, posed for photos in the Bird Room. This was followed by a private meeting and reception in the stunning Hall of Mirrors. During the reception, His Majesty, King Harald V of Norway, presented the Grand Cross of the Order of St. Olaf with a chain to King Frederick X of Denmark. Founded in 1847 by King Oscar I, the Order of St. Olaf is presented to royalty, heads of state, and Norwegians. In the early afternoon, Their Majesties and the Crown Prince couple of Norway arrived at Akershus Fortress, where they placed a wreath at the foot of the National Monument in honor of Norwegians who lost their lives during World War II. After a visit to Parliament, where King Frederick X and Queen Mary held a meeting with the President, they arrived at Bigada Royal Estate to attend a private luncheon with the royal family, including Her Royal Highness, Princess Ingrid Alexandra of Norway. At 3 p.m., Their Majesties and the Crown Prince couple of Norway visited the Oslo Science City and the Nanotechnology Laboratory, Mina Lab. According to the Royal Court of Norway, during their visit, Their Majesties and the Crown Prince couple learned about, quote, Norwegian and Danish cooperation in research into technology and green transition, and about the importance of researching microchips, sensors, and new materials. Microchips, 
are of decisive importance for the green shift and of great strategic importance for Europe, with consequences for, among other things, aircraft, electric cars, wind turbines, and solar cells. End quote. In the evening, their majesties, King Harald V and Queen Sonia of Norway, hosted a lavish gala banquet in the Grand Dining Hall at the Royal Palace. Guests attending this evening's banquet included their Royal Highnesses, Crown Prince Haakon and Crown Princess Metamai the Norway, Her Highness, Princess Astrid, Mrs. Werner, members of King Frederick X and Queen Mary of Denmark's Royal Court, members of Norwegian Parliament, and distinguished guests. In his speech to King Frederick X and Queen Mary of Denmark, King Harald V of Norway said, quote, Just today the two of you have been married for 20 years. Surely that deserves a round of applause. We think it's very nice that you chose to celebrate your wedding anniversary here with us tonight. During these years, you have raised four wonderful children, Christian, Isabella, Vincent, and Josephine. The Crown Prince couple and Princess Ingrid Alexandra joined in celebrating Prince Christian, who has now become Crown Prince, his 18th birthday last year. The Queen and I are grateful that the close ties of family and friendship between our two families are also continued through new generations. It means a lot to all of us, I think. And of course, we expect that you two will continue the tradition of spending lots of time in the Norwegian mountains and embracing the somewhat peculiar Norwegian sport of cross-country skiing. Your Majesties, dear Frederick and Mary, it is a great pleasure to have you visit. I wish you all the best for your important work. Both to you and to all of us, I want to say, find your own path and spend time tending to what is most important in life. We raise a toast to King Frederick and Queen Mary and to the warm relationship between Denmark and Norway. End quote. On Monday, His Royal Highness, Prince Daniel of Sweden, held a meeting with the deputy director of the organization, The Entrepreneurs, Mr. Benjamin Dusa, at the Royal Palace. According to the Royal Court of Sweden, The Entrepreneurs have, quote, approximately 60,000 members and works to promote entrepreneurship and improve the conditions for entrepreneurs. The organization is present all over the country with 18 regional offices and 260 local associations. In the meeting, Prince Daniel received information about the business of entrepreneurs and current issues in entrepreneurship. End quote. In Tokyo, His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Norihito of Japan, participated in the annual planting of rice in the rice fields next to the Biological Research Institute at the Imperial Palace. The tradition of rice cultivation at the Imperial Palace began with Emperor Showa. This morning, the Emperor planted a total of 20 seedlings into the soil of 240 square meters of rice field, including Nihon Masuri, a non-glutinous rice grown from the seeds that the Emperor sowed himself last month. The Emperor also planted Mangetsu Mochi, a glutinous rice, According to the Imperial Household Agency, the rice will be harvested in September and will be used for the ritual known as the Nia Masai. This morning, Their Majesties King Philippe and Queen Mathilde of the Belgians began their official one-day visit to the municipality of Masai. According to the Royal Court of Belgium, the visit focused on education and mental health. The day began with a visit to the Mosa RT, a secondary school that, quote, offers around 40 options to its students to prepare them for higher education or the job market, end quote. Thereafter, their majesties visited the organization Integra. Integra provides support for children whose parents are suffering from addiction or mental health issues. The visit ended in the city of Masaik, where their majesties participated in a walkabout in the town square, where they spent time meeting with the public. This was followed by a reception in the town hall, hosted by local government officials.
Meanwhile, three hours north of Masaik, their majesties, King Willem Alexander and Queen Maxima of the Netherlands, carried out a one-day regional visit to the municipalities of Hogeland and Ames Delta in the province of Groningen. According to RVD, their majesties visited various villages within the municipalities where they spent time meeting with residents to talk about the cultural and natural historical heritage, the opportunities and challenges in the agricultural sector and the fishery sector, and the quality of life in the region. In Paris, Her Royal Highness, Princess Alexandra of Luxembourg, and her husband, Mr. Nicholas Baggery, welcomed their first child this morning. The princess gave birth to a healthy baby girl named Victoire. In a brief statement from the Cruel Grand Ducal, quote, mother and child are doing well, end quote. Princess Alexandra and Mr. Nicholas Baggery held their religious wedding ceremony on April 29th, 2023 in the south of France. Wonderful news. Congratulations to the princess and Mr. Baggery and all of the Grand Ducal family of Luxembourg. On Monday, His Royal Highness Grand Duke Henri of Luxembourg and His Royal Highness Hereditary Grand Duke Guillaume of Luxembourg hosted a reception at the Palais Grand Ducal for diplomats participating in the 2024 Diplomatic Conference. According to the Cruel Grand Ducal, the conference, organized by the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Mr. Xavier Battelle, addresses the, quote, current issues and the challenges of Luxembourg foreign policy. End quote. And finally, in Oviedo, Her Majesty Queen Letizia of Spain attended a commemorative event on the occasion of Dia Mundial de la Cruz Roja y de la Media Luna Roja at the Auditorio Palacio de Congresos Príncipe Felipe. During the event, the Queen presided over the presentation of the 2024 Con Decoraciones de Cruz Roja Española. The decorations are presented to individuals or organizations in recognition of the, quote, social and solidarity work of those who share and defend the same principles and values as a Cruz Roja Española institution and achieve a positive social impact, end quote. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for joining me this afternoon. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. I will be back tomorrow on Wednesday, May 15th, with all the latest world news and events. Until then, I sincerely wish each and every one of you a wonderful afternoon. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Comment below and click on the notification bell so you won't miss a new episode. Have a wonderful afternoon, everyone, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.